I did a getting over easter eggs and secrets video a long time ago, but I missed some things and I've learned some things since then. So I wanted to do an updated video with as many things as I can think of, so here we go. 15 getting over it facts. Number 15. His name is Diogenes. Have you thought about who you are in this? Are you the man in the pot, Diogenes? Are you his hand? Are you the top of his hammer? The man in the pot's name is Diogenes. Not Bennett, this is, of course, referenced in the dialogue. Bennett Foddy is the game developer and narrator. But quite possibly the most overlooked thing in the game is the paintings in the background of the furniture section. There is two paintings in the background of the furniture section of Diogenes, the Greek philosopher, who was known to have lived in a clay wine pot, hence the cauldron. There's also a few other pots scattered around the map. The Golden Pot. You've probably seen it in speedruns before, but did you know how to get it? Each time you beat the game, your pot gets a little bit golder. Golder? Is that a word? Sure. And when you reach 50 wins, you have reached peak goldness. Sexy Hiking. Getting Over is based off of a 2002 game called Sexy Hiking. This game is a homage to a free game that came out in 2002, titled Sexy Hiking. The starting tree is a direct reference to the starting tree in Sexy Hiking. Anyway, when you start Sexy Hiking, you're standing next to this dead tree that blocks the way to the entire rest of the game. It might take you an hour to get over that tree, and a lot of people never got past it. It's pretty difficult to reach, but quite possibly the most popular easter egg is the Sexy Hiking character, who can be found on a floating rock beyond the tower. And when you reach it, the level completion sound from Sexy Hiking plays. Five hundred clicks. Sometimes when struggling and getting over it, you might click your mouse a little bit. It even happens to speedrunners when you're trying to go fast and frantically flailing around in the heat of the moment. If you somehow manage to click it 500 times, you'll get this easter egg. Listen, this is a little awkward, but you've clicked the mouse button 500 times now. I'm gonna say you're gripping the mouse a little bit hard. The bad ending. Bennett actually added a custom voice line to the game because one of the game testers got stuck on the tower and couldn't escape. This is past mending. You got the bad ending. It was thought to be impossible to escape for two and a half years. Although very difficult, it turned out with some persistence, it can be done. This spot, on the other hand, is inescapable. gift. If it takes you more than 8 minutes to get past the anvil section, which is a pretty common spot people struggle, the game drops a gift for you. The thumb! What about the thumb? It's just a thumb, right? Well, actually, Bennett thought he'd be a little funny since nobody would ever know, right? but it's been hiding in plain sight the whole time. And with mods, if you look at the hand from the side, there's a nice birdie waiting for you. The hat. Did you know where the hat comes from? It fell off the snowman's head. The van. I debated even adding this one, but so many people seem to think this is a boat, I had to add it. Did you know this is a van? Let me know down below if you thought it was a boat. I don't see it. The Snake. The Snake is a reference to the board game, Snakes and Ladders. You want to climb up the ladders, but not fall down the snake. The Crane. 
The crane is always swaying ever so slightly. Can, can you see it? Did, did, did you see it? I only realized this because I found a class in the code called crane move. Turns out you can adjust the number too. I can't help but think originally this had a different purpose with moving objects and such, but with the way the physics react, I can see why it would have been removed. Speedrun detected. This is a removed feature from the game. I'm not sure if it ever made it to any official releases, but I must say, I'm glad we don't have to listen to this every time we start a run. Unused dialogue. There's actually 32 voice lines in the game files that aren't used. Some of them sound like they were tips, maybe intended for a tutorial. I want you to think about the momentum of the pot. Sometimes when you want to go high, you have to lower yourself down first so you've got room to swing your hammer. Sorry about the bats, by the way. That was uncalled for. This one's my favorite. Steady. 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 If you want to see more of those, you can check out my original Easter Eggs video. The Hammer. The hammer in Getting Over is actually a Yosemite hammer, but the size of a sledgehammer. A Yosemite hammer is a hammer used for climbing. I guess that makes sense, although it's actually used to hammer nails into the rock. The Lighthouse. The lighthouse in the background of the starting area is actually the Biloxi Lighthouse. We found this reference photo in the game files. Yeah, it's really that big. We searched around a little bit looking for similar signs on Google Images, and then we realized it was right in front of us the whole time. It, it, was, it was in the file name. This was later confirmed by Bennett himself. All right, so that's 15. But before we go, I've got some honorable mentions. Let me know down below the ones you didn't know of and if I missed any. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and if you'd be so kind, consider subscribing. I actually ended up writing down more than 30 facts, but I figured those were the 15 most important. I'm just gonna do a rapid fire for the rest. Here's our honorable mentions. These Half-Life 2 barrels in the background. This naked lady staring intensely at a Dorito. Random faucet in a wall. The backside of this rock has a heart engraved on it. You can pass the bucket without even touching the bucket. This gargoyle, it has a fully modeled body. The graffiti here says, what's up? According to Bennett, the pot is to protect his legs and is full of bodily fluids. This hook is apparently Bennett's favorite detail on the map because it's a bait. Diogenes is actually a default male fit A from Adobe Fuse. This doghouse has the name Sam, but what the dog doing? The map in the poster in the cover art for the game looks nothing like the actual map. This rock in the background is smiling. This lamp is actually called dumb lamp in the game files. Stupid lamp. I don't know why, but there's also picture of a mouse in the game files. And last but not least, if you remove the pot, Diogenes has no peanut. These Half-Life 2 barrels in the back. These Half-Life 2 barrels in the backgrounds. This na these Half-Life 2 barrels. These Half-Life 2 barrels in the background.